Hello, friends. Welcome to our service of morning prayer for June 19th, 2022. Today is a very special day in the life of the, of the parish of Newcastle, Nelson, and Hardwick. It is Eskumenak Disaster Memorial Sunday. Today, our service will take a slightly different tact. We'll begin with a memorial of those who died on that faithful day, on that faithful evening and morning of June 19th and 20th, 1959. Thirty-five fishermen perished in a violent storm. And we remember them 63 years later. Our service today takes the format of a remembrance uh, service uh, prior to an abbreviated service of morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. And so let us begin. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Psalm 107 verses 23 to 32. They that go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business on the great waters. These men see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind ariseth, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They are carried up to heaven and down again to the deep. Their soul melteth away because of the trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. So they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivereth them from their distress. He maketh the storm to cease, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they are at rest. And so he bringeth them unto the, ha the haven where they would, where they would be. And that man would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doth for the children of men. That they would exalt him also in the congregations of the people and praise him in the assembly of elders. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So friends, we remember the 35 fishermen who lost their lives that late night and early morning, June 19th and 20th, 1959. John Chapman, Adrian Chasson, Albert Chasson, Alphonse Chason, Robert Chason, William Chason, Fraser Cook, Edgar Daigle, Charles Govan, Arthur Kelly, Hector Kelly, Hugh Kelly, Clifford Kingston, Windsor Kingston, Alfred McClanahan, George McLeod, Ammon Manuel, William George Manuel, Alfonso Martin, Andre Martin, Remy Martin, Alan Mills, Andrew Mills, Jeffrey Richard, 
Jean-Louis Richard, Lionel Richard, Raphael Robichaud, Victor Robichaud, Leon Roy, Harold Taylor, Connard Williston, Eric Williston, Haley Williston, Haynes Williston, and Oswald Williston. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we remember today. Bless us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who we see no longer, for those of us who are left. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in an everlasting future with you. For you alone are the source of life and hope. You alone are the strength and shield, now and forever. This we ask in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God, to walk in his laws which he set before us. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His goodness and mercy. Mighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from Thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so, friends, our psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 77. I will read verses 1 to 3 and 11 to 20. The psalmist writes, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the, in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also mediate at all your, on all your works and talk of your deeds. Your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. You are the God who, who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O oh God, the waters saw you, they were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The, the lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea. Your path in the great waters. Your footsteps are not, are not known. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading for today is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 10 to 17. And St. Paul writes, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The, sp the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. And so we read St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 8 to 17 and 25 to 27. And St. John writes, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, 
and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but, I give, but do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And so, friends, I speak in the name of God the Father who created us, God the Son who redeems us, and God the Holy Spirit that, that strengthens and upholds us each and every day. Amen. All too often, as we go about our daily lives, we fail to recognize God's presence in the rhythms of our daily life, of our busy existence. Today, we come together once again to honor those 35 souls of our community who were lost in that horrible storm on June 19th and 20th, 1959. The Eskumenak disaster. We also come together to commit their memories, their legacies, and our own lives to God's unending grace. 35 fishermen, young and old, perished in a violent storm off the coast near the mouth of the Miramichi River in the Northumberland Strait. Still to this day, it remains as the worst work-related disaster ever to occur in the history of the province of New Brunswick. We honor them for their legacies, for the legacies they have left behind even to this day. We honor them for their hard work under often difficult and dangerous circumstances. And we honor them for their dedication to their families and their communities. Clearly not one of them could, would ever claim to be perfect. But we thank God for those who gave their lives to put roofs over their families' heads, and to put food on the tables of so many at home 
and abroad. We also thank God for those in this community and in the communities around the world who strive to do the same. Good yet imperfect folk who work hard to make an honest living. We pray that on our best days, we might strive to live up to the good that they have left behind. We also look with anticipation and hope as we journey forward, knowing that as people of faith, our best days are yet to come. Things were clearly different in 1959. Now, I, I say to people, you just have to look at me. That's, that's the year I was born. I was three months old when the, the Escumanac disaster occurred. And clearly, I've aged quite a bit in 63 years. I am constantly reminded how blessed we truly are to live in this country at this time in history, even in the midst of a lingering worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. While we enjoy the benefits of untold advancements in technology, healthcare, and a legal system that sees all people as equal and valuable, we must remember that these blessings could never have happened without the sacrifices of those who have gone before. As we remember those 61 souls that kissed their families goodbye that fateful evening, only to have 16 return to hug their loved ones less than 24 hours later. Let us also honor those families 108 widows and children, mothers and fathers, uncles and cousins, friends and neighbors who were left behind. All of their lives were changed on that faithful night. Yet they continued to soldier on some even to this day. We are truly blessed to have such strong, resilient folk in our midst. Friends, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Fathers and brothers, uncles and cousins, husbands and lovers were snatched away by nature's fury. Yet even in such confusion and heartbreak, Hope and strength abound, even to this day. In our Gospel reading, in the Gospel of John today, we are reminded that when we, when we encounter Jesus in our lives, His Spirit st stays with us, even in the ebbs and flows of daily existence. In our bumps and bruises, Jesus is there. In our sorrows and our joys, Jesus is there. In our celebrations and our mournings, Jesus is there. And in our turmoil and in our peace, Jesus is there, journeying right along with us. Scriptures do not offer us a shield against the experiences of this mortal life. They do not tell us that if we follow a prescribed set of rules, we will not make mistakes or encounter hardship. On the contrary, the Bible tells us that a life of faith may bring us more struggles more pain, and more disappointment. What the scriptures do tell us, however, is that a life grounded in the teachings 
and example of Jesus Christ will help us to absorb the chaos and upheavals of our existence. The Word of God offers us hope beyond this mortal life, even in the midst of uncertainty, hardship, and grief. It is our faith in Jesus Christ that offers us hope for a better tomorrow. Friends, all these years later, the Escumenac disaster continues to affect us, leaving us feeling vulnerable, weak, and afraid. But our Christ-like response must be to both trust and hope. Trust that even in the catastrophic events that turn our lives inside out, we can have trust that God's unfolding story of victory will eventually become a reality. Hope beyond that which we can see, hear, touch, taste, or smell to something far more profound and everlasting. To experience Jesus is to experience what God is like. In Jesus, the creator of all that is in, in Jesus, the creator of heaven, of all that is seen and unseen, became like ordinary folk and lived amongst ordinary folk so that we might both see and believe. The gospel says all you need to do is look at what God, what God has done through Jesus. all you have to do. Through Jesus, God is revealed to us as one who keeps his covenants and is willing to go the distance even unto death. So friends, on this Escumenac Disaster Memorial Sunday, on this Father's Day, 2022. Let us remember that through our Lord Jesus Christ, God calls all humanity out of darkness and into his marvelous light. In the words of the most reverend Stuart Payne, may the Lord Jesus who loves with a wounded heart be your love forever. May the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, help you to serve others. May the Lord Jesus, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of the road. May you find the face of the Lord Jesus in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of the Lord Jesus in you. And this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honor, dominion, and glory on this day and forevermore. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the collect for the second Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. 
Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in thy defense may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now a prayer for the Queen and for the Commonwealth. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name, and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the, for the uh, clergy and people. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy, and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now a prayer for the conditions of all people. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of humanity, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially do we pray for the good estate of the universal church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. And especially do we pray for those who, as unworthy as we are, have asked us to pray for them. We pray for Steve and Jane and Danny and Ann, for Paul and Lawrence and Audrey, for Julie and Eunice, for Jenny, for Ethel, for Tom, for Everett, for Jesse, for John, for Peggy, for Blake and Louise, for Donnie, for Joyce, for Michael and Libby, for Lois, for Carol, for Mike, for Jenna. We pray for Laudia and Velma. We pray for Diane and Hilda, for Jean, for Reverend Kent, for Catherine, for Marcel, for Clarence, for baby Edward, for Ronnie, for Olive, for Andre, and for anyone else known to us or unknown, 
who are in need of God's healing hand. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve thee according, relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings, and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ his sake. Amen. Now the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and this promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And so, friends, as we bring this short time of memorial and thanksgiving, to a close. Let us remember the words of St. Paul in Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.